So it is very early on Wednesday morning, uh, and I am in the South Lounge uh, of the Indiana Memorial Union doing a story that I have been trying to cover for since last Friday. Uh, so last Friday I came, wanted to do the story, uh, and uh, the, this table was completely full, and I thought, well, I'll come back um, the, this afternoon. A bunch of things happened on Friday, didn't manage to, to make it back, uh, and so I said, well, I will come back on Monday, or I'll come back over the weekend, because on the weekend, we'll be here. I came back on Saturday, came back on Sunday, uh, and this table was always occupied and there were always students studying at this table. So I said, well, I'll come in Monday morning at 7 a.m. Came in Monday morning at 7 a.m. Guess what, 7 a.m. on a Monday morning, this table's occupied. Whew. So couldn't make it yesterday, came in this morning uh, and was finally able to get a seat at this table. This is apparently the most popular table in the union. And I'm willing to bet that students have absolutely no idea who Professor James J. Robinson is. He's also in this picture over here. And why, why this table or why those things, right? So James J. Robinson, this guy, it's the only picture I can find of him. Uh, James J. Robinson was born in the 1890s um, here in Indiana, came to IU, graduated, he was captain of the cross country team, graduated from IU in 1914, uh, and then he went to uh, Harvard, uh, the IU of the East Coast, uh, and got a law degree, came back, he was a lawyer here in Indiana forgot to add, he was on union board uh, while he was here as a student. And this is actually a much later picture of him at a union board alumni reunion uh, that I'll talk about in a second, uh, or I'll put some context to here in a second. Anyway, he graduated from uh, Harvard uh, and then came back and was a lawyer here in Indiana. In 1924, he joined the faculty and one of his specialty areas was international criminal law. And he did international criminal law uh, for quite a while, uh, all the way up through World War II. Now, briefly in World War I, when he was at Harvard, he had volunteered for the Navy uh, and was in training as an ensign in the Navy. Uh, but after two months, the war ended, he got released, never made it to um, uh, beyond ensign. So World War II happens, and he's a faculty member here at IU, and he actually got loaned during the war to the Supreme Court as an advisor to the Supreme Court on international criminal law. And he was doing that work uh, throughout the war until 1944, when uh, the military came to him and said, hey, uh, there, Ensign uh, Robinson, we'd like to have you back if at all possible. Uh, we need some lawyers for our war crimes division. And he actually came in as a lieutenant commander, went straight from Ensign to lieutenant commander, and came in in 1944 to the Navy. Well, pretty quickly he moved up through that, and by the time the Pacific War Crimes Tribunals were happening after the war, he was a captain and he was the lead prosecutor in the Pacific War Crimes Tribunals for the Navy. Uh, and so he did that. And meanwhile, this whole time, since 1941, when he left to go to DC, he's on leave as a faculty member. He's still technically a faculty member, we're not paying him, but he's on leave. That'll come back in a second. Uh, shortly after his time, he briefly returns to IU, and uh, the newly independent country of Libya said, we're in the process of setting up our legal system, we'd really like you to come help us. Uh, and, and he said, sure, I'll come do that. So he goes and helps the country of Libya set up its judicial system, and they eventually decide to appoint him to the Supreme Court of Libya. And he is the only American citizen to ever serve on the Supreme Court of another country. He served on the Supreme Court of Libya uh, from 1954 to 1969. Well, interestingly enough, somewhere in there, I don't remember when, late 60s, he hits mandatory retirement from IU. Now keep in mind, he's been on leave for 20 plus years at this point from the institution, but in order to be faculty emeritus and still hold the title and everything else, he has to actually come back uh, as we require somebody to work on their last day of work. He comes back uh, to work one day so that he can retire uh, from IU and then go back to being on the Supreme Court of Libya. Uh, and he does that all the way through 69, he retires, comes back to 
to the U.S. Uh, and when he comes back to the U.S. later, he does some volunteer work around the university, some emeritus faculty stuff. He's the Distinguished Alumni Award recipient uh, in 1972 uh, and goes on to do uh, a few other things. There's an international law fellowship that's named after him uh, in the law school and they have some information on him as well. Uh, but here at this table, there's a picture of the union board uh, and a reunion that they had uh, with that. And then on the other side over here, there is a plaque with his name on it. Now, I told you how busy this table is. Oh my God, how many students probably sit here and have absolutely no idea who he is or why they're sitting at this table? All right, that's your history briefing for today. See you next week.